Um, I'm just going to go through some of the basics to remind you about usability testing. And also want to talk to you about a test plan, something that you did not have to create for this particular class, because I think that would just add even more work for you to learn. But out in industry, it's really important that you create a test plan. And then after that, I want to give you time to work on your task wording with your groups in class. All right, are there any questions? OK, awesome. All right, so we're going to continue talking about usability testing, how usability testing works, and what aspects of usability testing you should be doing in your group project. So let's do a quick, quick review. And this time, you guys get to answer the questions, because I know you guys have this down pat by now. Yeah. yeah. What is usability? <laughs> Boy, I don't let you guys cheat enough, do I? Should I put it in bigger font? <laughs> That's right, it's the measure of the quality of the interaction, very important, the interaction between a person and the system. Are you testing the person? No. no. Is that important to remember when you are doing your usability testing? Yes. Yes, it's critical. Is it important to tell your participants that? Absolutely. All right, so remember that. So a usability test is intended to test whether the product being developed is usable by the intended user. We know what an intended, your intended user is, right? Is it your 80-year-old uh, grandmother if you are creating something for accountants? And she's not an accountant? No. So remember who you are intending this product to be for. So you want to Look at tasks, see what types of tasks, what types of goals the user wants to accomplish. Select appropriate tasks and see if your intended users can achieve those tasks with the current design. So it's really very important to, of course, remember who your users are and that they are the ones who can tell you if your design is usable for them. Too many times we get stuck into our, our egos because we know better because we're so awesome. So you want to remember that. A lot of times, remember, we know more about certain things than our users. So they're not going to see things in the, uh, in the same light as we do. Now, usability testing, I think as I mentioned last time or the time before, is that it's very, very commonly used in industry. It's probably one of the most commonly used user experience research techniques that are out there. It's very commonly used, especially in desktop applications and websites, where again, we're having users perform tasks. But more and more, it's being used with handhelds. And in fact, if you go into industry, you'll see that they actually use it with handhelds a lot more than even people who are doing research in academia use it with handhelds. All right, it's been very, very critical for the development of how things like smartphones, your iPhones, your Android phones, your tablets, how those actually work, what gestures we use, you know, our swiping and those sorts of things. Now, I, I did go through these really quickly. These are some of the different types of, of methods and the different, different types of forms that you will use it, be using. I will go through those in more detail on Tuesday. All right, so now we have another review where I get to test you guys. All right, because all semester I've been kind of throwing information at you, right? So you learned about usability goals, design principles, gestalt theories, all that fun and exciting stuff where we see cool pictures and we get to analyze, you know, interfaces and websites and products. Does anyone remember why this is important? Kind of gets lost in all the details, right? Okay, so you guys get to answer the question. Why should you care about usability? What are some of the things that you've encountered that tell you we need products that are more usable? Whether it's a bad product or a good product. 
Right, satisfaction or dissatisfaction with a product? What's an example of a product we have, in general, love, are very satisfied with? That I mentioned less than five minutes ago. That's a handheld. Smartphones. We love our smartphones. Right, we take them everywhere. Do you think it's important to have a smartphone that's very usable? Absolutely. So especially since we have smartphones like the, uh, the iPhone. You see a lot of people making comparisons between other smartphones and the iPhone? Absolutely, especially as the Android products are becoming more and more prevalent and more and more usable. Okay, give me a bad example. You guys must have bad examples. Windows 8. Windows 8. Yeah, no, I get, I get that a lot. Okay, actually, I think this is the first semester I don't have someone actually testing out Windows 8. It's pretty interesting. I have like three semesters of students testing out Windows 8 starting at the beta. All right, so Windows 8, a lot of people don't like it. Right, there's some who do, but there are a lot of people who don't because it is not what we consider intuitive based on things like Windows 7 and Windows XP and whatever was in between. Vista, no one liked Vista. We won't count that one. Okay, what about online? You go to a website. Has every website you've ever gone to just been so awesome? No? What's the most irritating thing about a website you don't like? Ads. <laughs> yeah, the ads that pop up in your face. When it won't load. I have no patience. Five seconds. Five seconds? Yeah, too slow. Find someplace else. Right, so things like waiting too long for a page to load. Right, I think we talked earlier in the semester about going to pages that you can't read them. How many of you remember back into the 90s? Anyone? Okay, so remember the 90s. Do you remember the 90s where when it became really popular to put all these cutesy little very, very busy backgrounds on your web pages? And you go to them and you try to read what's on the web page. What do you see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, what a mess. Cutesy background. Can't read anything. Do you think anyone still makes web pages like that? Some of you shaking no. Boy, you guys, yeah, some, some do. Fortunately, not so prevalent. But still, that's another type of, of problem. So the thing you want to think about in terms of why all of this is really important is when you are creating something, when you're creating a website or an app or a product, do you want users to come back and use them? Yes, you do. And a critical part of that is how usable is that product? Because sometimes we get so mired in the details, we kind of forget what the ultimate goal is, where we want to create very usable, user-friendly products that our users are going to want to continually to use. So when we have poor usability, we end up with what? What's the number one thing we end up with? Frustrated users. You guys are so brilliant. Who likes being frustrated? So, okay, some of you are smart Alex and like being frustrated. Well, most of us don't like being frustrated. But the rest of you are uh, masochists. Now, we had talked about how we want users to use our product, right? Well, if you actually look at when people stop using a product, there actually tend to be some patterns. Most of this research has actually been on the web. I just have a few little details here. There's actually a lot of information about this online if you choose you want to really look into it. So there's research that's looked at why do users leave a website and don't come back. The number one reason is they can't find what they're looking for. 60% of users if they go to a site and they can't find what they're using for, use, looking for, they just leave. You now have lost that user. There's also complaints about, well, you, you, know, you just kind of get lost. You, 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 you're trying to traverse through this very complicated site, and now you don't know where you are. 
So you may not use breadcrumbs, for example, so the user can see where they are. So if you have an e-commerce site that has multiple categories and subcategories, and you have categories that actually overlap, it's very easy to get lost. It's another thing that users tend to complain about. And the other is information that's hard to read. Now, we talked about the beautiful, beautiful, busy backgrounds from the 90s, right? Are there other ways that make information difficult for users to read and understand? Yes, there are. We've talked about them. Do you remember some, what some of them are? Font size. Font size. The position and understanding of the page situation. Right, so where they're placed on the screen. So the contrast, how easy is it to see? What about the... the right, is it, so is it in a context that has other things that it's related to? What about verbiage? Right, so jargon. Is it technical jargon? Is it everyday language? And that, in particular, you need to worry about for what in your group projects? Right, for the user questionnaire and the, your tasks. Right, really important. So you need to try to think a little bit outside of the box when we're talking about things that are difficult for the user. Now, some of the research looking at repeat visits also gives us a little bit more information about how important usability is. If you have a user who is a first-time user, if they go to your site or if they use your app for the first time, and they have a negative experience, 40% of them will not go back to that site again or try to use that app again. In fact, one of the areas of research that is becoming more popular these days is looking at app usage. Right, so for those of you who have, you know, iPhones or iPads, right, you go to the app store, you download, download an app, you install it, you use it, you hate it, what do you do? You don't use it again, what else do you do? Yeah, you get rid of it. Right, you delete it. That is very, very common. 40% won't try it again, regardless of how much they may think it's important. That's an area that some researchers are actually saying that this is a higher number when it comes to apps. We have to see whether that's the case. But very, very, a lot of very intense research with that. Now, there are other practical aspects you need to worry about, things like higher support costs. Right? If you have a product that's not usable, then you're going to ha be having a lot of more people calling your support line. And if you have a lot of people calling your support line, what does that mean? Something's not right. So then you have to hire more people. And that costs money. And also decreased productivity because now, instead of going and adding nice, new, cool features, what are you doing? Good. Going back to your design and fixing problems. So again, we want to remember what the real purpose of doing usability testing is. It's not just for us to go be, go be social and have fun. Right? It's so that we have these usable, viable products. Now, I went ahead and I put just a list of some of the usability problems that are very common. I'm not going to go through the list this time because I do want to make sure that you do have time to work on your tasks. But these are all things that we actually have talked about in class before. So think about what are some of the problems when you are looking at your group project, what are some of the typical problems that we may have with a particular product? And that's one of the things that you can do to think about, is this something I would want to test in my usability testing? <laughs>